everyone, welcome back to my channel, Sharon Cullen Art. Today I'm just going to quickly talk to you for a second and then I'm going to get into a quick gouache painting, uh, which will probably be in time lapse so that I can keep the video, you know, kind of low. But um, first of all, I wanted to thank you all for your well wishes, your kindness, your, your prayers um, while I've been going through my lung issue. My rapid COVID test came back negative, and then yesterday my PCR long-range COVID test or longer test also came back negative, so um, I knew it would. Uh, my problem is my lung infection, and I had been off of antibiotics for about three weeks and busted out in a fever, 100.5 fever, achy joints, shortness of breath, so I had to go for the COVID test. Diesel, honey, every time I film, you do this. Every time I record, you do this. Don't give me winky eyes. Um, sorry, guys. What do you need? Let me pause this for a minute. You have silence until I start talking. Get this. Um, don't worry, he does not eat plastic. Somebody was very worried about that. He just likes to pop the bubbles. So he will pop those loudly in the background for a minute. But anyway, what I wanted... Oh. Okay, I'm back. This dog. Anyway, I wanted to say a huge thank you for all the well wishes and prayers that I received while I was ill. And... Uh, it ended up being my lung infection, which I knew it would. Uh, like I said, I was off my antibiotics for about three, three and a half weeks, and that was enough to trigger this huge thing where my body couldn't fight it, which is the real scare for me, and I'm trying to cope with it the best I can because this is going to be the rest of my life. They talk about putting me on cyclic antibiotics, but if I don't make it the four weeks to restart... Uh, it would be like the first week of every month taking antibiotics, which I'm not real thrilled about doing because I don't want to build a resistance, and there's only so many drugs that Pseudomonas is sensitive to. So uh, I don't want to end up with a pick line in my neck and or a port where I have to have IV antibiotics every month. So I'm just keeping my fingers crossed. But I did have a, a fever this time. And I crashed and burned. With my adrenal insufficiency, um, as I've told you before, it, your adrenals produce your cortisol, which is always touted as a bad thing. But cortisol is actually a good thing. It keeps you alive. It helps you with your fight or flight response. And um, people tend to get stressed out and then produce too much of it and can gain weight. Uh, just like any steroid. Uh, cortisol is a steroid. It's our human steroid that we have in our body. I take a fake one called Cortef, hydrocortisone, um, and when I get sick, I have to double or triple my dose. By the time I got to my doctor's office here, my internist's office, my blood pressure had bottomed out, so I was pretty sick. And uh, he wanted to put me in the hospital my oxygen saturations were very low, in the low 80s, uh, especially with exertion, but I could come up to 90 when I was resting. And I hesitated going to the hospital because I have PTSD. Many of you already know that. And my PTSD is from when I had spine surgery on my neck back in 2014, I believe. So six years ago, gosh, time flies. But anyway, I went into a respiratory arrest because they couldn't control my pain because I was on pain medication pre-op. And then the anesthesia fights with your receptors and it screws everything up in the brain and then you don't get a good pain response from your pain medication. I was on IV Dilaudid, fentanyl patches, Valium, which was a major no-no, but I needed it for spasms in the neck, um, Percocets, and there was another thing involved. But anyway, I was taking all of it. And eventually I went into a respiratory arrest. I told the nurse I was. She wouldn't listen to me. I was a pain in her ass because I was panicking. And it ended up 
that I did go into a respiratory arrest, which would have been a full cardiac arrest, except for the blessed little nursing assistant who just happened to walk into my room to empty garbage or do something and or to check on us and saw that I was blue and she called a code and I woke up to the CPR team over me. That created panic attacks of which I've never had any my whole life, but I did have an anxiety issue which runs in my family genetically, I guess. And I went into that respiratory arrest and and it took me months and months, if not years of therapy with the pain psychologist to be able to even walk into a hospital again. I had to go through all of these exercises where I walked over the bridge from the medical building and then turned around and came back, then walked over the bridge to the Starbucks and then did not go into the main portion of the hospital and then come back, then the shopping area and then went back. And then finally to the hospital area, which I failed at. I failed at all of them initially. Then I had to sit in the parking lot and stare at hospital rooms from the parking lot and look at the stuff hanging from the ceiling, you know, the movable lights and all that kind of thing. And that would put me in a panic attack. And I gradually had to go from reading in my car while sitting in the parking lot to looking at the rooms, um, playing music, not playing music, the whole thing until I could get back into a hospital, which I can do now. But going into the hospital and not having the ability to have any visitors, I have my husband with me um, or my sister, would have been way too overwhelming. In fact, I'm starting to shake right now just thinking about it. It's a weird thing, and I can't explain it to anybody. As a nurse, I knew the symptoms, but while you're in it, you don't recognize it because your brain is just, you're in this fight or flight thing constantly that just won't stop. And um, anyway, so there I was, and that's why I did not want to go into the hospital. I know many of you were begging me to go to the hospital, but I made it through, and being an RN, I was checking my vital signs frequently, I was checking my oxygen saturation frequently, my temperature frequently, and he said if at rest I dropped into the 80s that I should go to the hospital. Well, I was dropping into the 80s, but I could deep breathe or use my incentive spirometer, you know, the thing with the thing that rises up, or some of them have balls. Um, it's an exercise for lung capacity. If I did that, I could get my oxygen saturation to hold at 90 to 92%, but then at rest, I'd fall back down. Taking antibiotics and prednisone to get through this, within 24 hours, I was 100% better than I was, well, or 50%, I'll say. I felt like 100. I'm still short of breath, with exertion especially, but um, my oxygen saturation at night does dip into the 80s when I fall asleep because I get tired of trying to breathe deep. And when you're trying to rest, your body automatically shallows your breath. And that's what I was doing, was shallowing my breath. And then I would dip into the 80s. But I was doing breathing treatments throughout the night. But then you're shaking and you can't sleep. So it is just a big thing. But I am so much better, you guys. I'm so much better. So don't worry about me, I'm okay. Um, and I'm continuing to get better every day with these antibiotics. Uh, my cough is just about gone now, which is good. Um, I do get a little bit of a cough at night, but uh, yeah, I'm doing good. So next thing, got myself some new gouache. I, I needed a, a warm red. I had naphthol red, but they're not real light fast. So I went to Pyrol Red um, for that. And then I got myself a few new brushes, a little set that took forever to come. And I must have got them on Amazon. They're called Polar Flow Brushes. And I took a recommendation from uh, Sarah Burns, who has Sarah Burns Studio here on YouTube. And I got a three-pack of those, so of flats, which I like. I've got plenty of rounds and everything. So you've seen my King Art Precisions and all of that, which are really good. So um, also a shout-out to Nib Nerd. I believe your name is Scott, if I don't remember rightly. Anyway, thank you so much for the nice Christmas gift that you sent. Yes, it did arrive after Christmas, like you said it would. Um, but it was nice to receive it, and I enjoyed it very much. Um, and the, the nice handmade watercolor card and the letter were very nice. So I appreciate it. He didn't want me to share it, 
on uh, YouTube, so I'm not sharing it. But I just wanted to give you a shout out and say thank you for the gift. It was very thoughtful of you. And it put a big smile on my face. And my husband's face, too. He read it. But um, Also, we're going to be getting into watercolor painting glass. I had ordered some marbles uh, from Amazon like a week ago week and a half ago. I'm still waiting on those to arrive. They'll probably come today or tomorrow. And then I just grabbed a couple dishes that I had laying around. Uh, these two dishes that have facets on them uh, so that I can use those. And I've got a couple other things around here. Uh, my green one and also my ball water jars which are really dirty right now so I wouldn't want to paint those. But um, I'm going to be doing some glass painting and show you some tips and tricks for painting glass. Uh, I'm not a super expert, but I've been wanting to improve upon it, so I'll share that with you. And um, it might be a little bit before I get to that because Lindsay, the frugal crafter, uh, Lindsay Weirich, <laughs> I was talking to her. We're on the same wavelength somehow. This has happened before when I found a paint my photo a few years ago of these cups with strawberries and stuff, a dish and a uh, cup and strawberries or whatever. And I painted them and then I posted the video and found out several days later by comment from somebody else that I copied off of Lindsay Weirich on Frugal Crafter. And I'm like, no, I didn't. I didn't copy her. And I went and looked at her video her video used different colors completely, and her painting turned out different. We have different styles, but I was worried because I was new to the YouTube scene, somewhat new, and I felt concerned that she would think I was copying from her. So I thought, I'm going to order these marbles, I'm going to do a marble painting, and sure enough, she did a marble painting just last week. I'm like, oh my gosh, so I said something to her about it. She got a laugh about it. So I'm going to wait a month or so before I go ahead and do any glass or marble painting because I don't want anybody to think I'm copying off of her. Uh, our approaches are going to be a little bit different on how we paint them. I paint them slightly different than she does. So, And there are several approaches. There's no right or wrong way. It's just that my way will be different than hers, and um, I will be giving you a different style of approach, uh, which may be more helpful or less helpful, you know. So that'll be down the road. Today I'm just gonna do a quick gouache painting though, and I think I'm just gonna do that in my sketchbook. Then I have to get to thank you cards, and I gotta clean up the studio. I'm also going to be doing a review very soon. Um, somebody approached me on Instagram. She really, really, really wanted me to um, review their products. And at first I didn't want to do it because a lot of it was acrylic related. And I'm, I used to paint in acrylic, but I don't anymore. It's not where I find my mojo that I enjoy. I mean, I've got a painting. You can see that one right up there. It was an intuitive painting. I've got paintings around that are acrylic. But most of my paintings are oil, watercolor, gouache, and uh, some pastel. But also, uh, I told her, okay, well, I will... I will review your canvases. And so I said I would like canvases that were the stretched frame canvas, and I asked her how deep they were. She said an inch. I usually use inch and a half. Well, there was some confusion. Sometimes we get paid for our reviews. Uh, it doesn't matter what your review is. It's an honest review. Um, but they will pay you for your time for doing the video and editing it. And then you get so much money for thousand, so many thousand views. It's just a thing we do on YouTube. But um, I told her that I wouldn't charge. They were a new company. And I said, just give me extra canvases. I asked for 12 by 16s. And then she asked about the charge. I said, well, if you throw in a couple 9 by 12s, I thought I'd get four stretch canvases. And that was plenty, you know. Well, she ended up sending me two packs of six panels these are paneled ones so they need framed paneled 12 by 16 so I got 12 12 by 16 panels <laughs> and then she sent me two eight packs of 9 by 12 panels which is crazy there was some great confusion and I finally said you know I don't need this is too much trouble let's just scratch it you can get somebody else to review your product I'm sure 
but she started begging me and so I said I would do it. So that's coming up as well. I'm going to be showing you how I can do gouache and watercolor on canvas. I do have a couple of old videos that I'll try to remember to post at the end. I'll show you one of the paintings right now. This was one of the paintings I did. This was the first painting I ever did in watercolor on canvas using watercolor ground. And it was this one. You can see that the watercolor takes very differently to canvas. So it's like painting with acrylic or something in a way. You don't get the spread. You won't get a flow that you get with watercolor paper using watercolor ground. Um, then when I was done, I put my Dorland's Wax Medium over it and realized that I had made a mistake on the butterfly and that there was this black showing here where I had a smear. So I was scrubbing at it to try to get it off. The wax took so immediately that I cannot access that to fix it. So it's there forever. But that was one of the paintings that I did. So I can show you how I do that in a video when I do the review. And hopefully the panels are good. I mean, panels are panels, really. So I don't see any issue with them. They look nice and flat. They look even. I don't see any um, mess-ups in the in the um, canvas, so that's good. And they were not dented or anything like that when I received them. So uh, I'll do that review coming up. But let's go ahead and get to this quickie gouache painting. I'm just taking a look at some uh, trees outside my window, and I'm going to paint a scene from that. It's a cloudy day, so I may use some of my own liberties. Under normal circumstances, I wouldn't usually draw my trees in like that first. Maybe it, it would depend, but it would have been easier for me to draw if I needed to, to draw the trees in after I had laid my sky and ground, um, but I chose to do it this way. So I'm going to paint around all of that. It just makes it more difficult. I'm using some ultramarine blue, white, and a little bit of rose uh, to start out, and then some yellow as well. I'm putting my ground in here first. This is not the sky, but because it was shadowed, the snow, I made it a lot more blue. When you look at snow, it really is not as white as you would think it is. It's always picking up the colors that are around it because it's crystallized, just like painting glass. So when you're painting snow, you've got to think of it more like when you're painting glass and pick up all of those reflections um, from the sky and the atmosphere and all of that. So uh, it's very similar. I'll be changing these colors a little bit down the road because the angle that I put the yellow in on is the same angle that I need to shadow the trees and some of it overlapped. So I'll fix that after I get the trees down and I go back to the snow again. I understand some of you do not like to see videos in time lapse. And as I've said in the past, especially if you're newer to my channel, you may not know this, but in older videos, I've stated that there is a little gear in the upper right hand corner of your screen on the video. If you click on that, go down to playback speed, click on that, you can change the speed that you're watching this in. And uh, if you want to hear my commentary, you will lose that when you change the speed. So you might want to watch it through with commentary if you need that. And then if you need to slow it down in certain areas, then just back it up and slow it down so that you can um, watch how I'm painting it in slower motion.
As I go down the tree with this large liner, it's a number six liner, I believe, Aqua Elite, um, by Princeton, is it? I forget. Um, I use the side of the brush and do more of a dry brush technique to get those needles to uh, land on there correctly. And then I go back over it with a darker green. I just added some blue to my green and darkened that color up, and that was all there was to it. I'm starting out with a lighter blue color for the snow since it's shadowed. The sky is so blue though I had to change the blue uh, to a lighter blue than I would have normally. And then I go over the top of that blue in areas with white just to brighten it up. Now I'm dry brushing blue and then some white over that for the trees. If you want to stay up to date on what's going on in my world and my paintings that are not seen on the YouTube channel or what's coming up on the YouTube channel, then follow me on Instagram at Sharon Cullen Art. So I'm just about finished with this video here. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And remember everybody, be courageous, paint with wild abandon, and most of all, be kind to each other. Take care. God bless you. See you next time.